How are we doing there boys and girls? Mantis here and welcome to video three in our four part TSM mini series. Uh, this one is going to be all about the operations. This is probably the one a lot of you have, have, have been waiting for. In the last one we took a, a little bit of a look at some of the price sources that TSM uh, generates and that you can utilize in these operations. And before that we made ourselves some simplistic groups and worked out how to get all the items in there. So if you've been following along so far, you'll probably be somewhere in the region of having something that looks like this. We're, you're going to have your groups, you've got some items in the groups, but we have a, one major problem of that we need to start putting some operations on these so that you know the whole system starts working as normal. Um, but what are operations? Why are we using operations? Well, let's take a little bit of a look then. Um, operations at their core are rules that Trade School Master uses when you're trying to do things, uh, when you're trying to buy things, when you're trying to craft things, and when you're trying to sell things. The operations are the rules that Trade School Master applies to the groups and in turn obviously the items that are in those groups. This is where understanding price sources is super valuable to us. These price sources allow to allow us to make dynamic operations. These are operations that change dependent on whether the market prices go up or down, the material prices go up or down. Your operations will dynamically change uh, based on these price sources. So if you haven't already, please, please, please make sure you watch the last video in the series. For the purpose of this, I'm going to make the assumption that you know about the price sources. And we're going to talk about just the details of how to craft these operations uh, in, a, in a little bit of detail for you. Top three operations then. What are the top three operations that people use? Well, you're going to have crafting operations, you're going to have auctioning operations, and you're going to have shopping operations. We're going to take a little bit of a look at those three today and see how we can configure them and how we can build them up. So let's uh, let's jump in the game then. Let's use our example that we've been using up until this point, which is the drums of deathly ferocity. Um, how do we go about assigning some operations to this? Um, now you will probably have everything set as default to begin with. Uh, we need to do some simple things to this though. We need to firstly work out how many of these things we're going to want to craft. Once we've crafted them, we want to know how to sell them. And what we might also want to do is put a shopping operation on there as a third thing, just to see that, well, maybe somebody uh, posts them way below what it costs us to craft. Maybe there's a flipping opportunity in there as well. So we're going to cover all of those three in this video today. So firstly, we want to craft some of these things. How many of these drums do we think we got a craft how do we work out these operations well the way I do it is I ask myself the question first even if you need to get a pen and paper out uh, write it down what do you want to do you do you, you do want to how many of them do you want to craft uh, that's a good place to start. Well, with drums, uh, they, it's going to be a, a consumable item. We suspect that we're going to be able to sell a fair few of these. We may want to craft 50, maybe 100 of these at a time, uh, so that we then have plenty of stock to then go out and sell. So how do we work that into an operation? Well, select the group where your drums are in. Um, and then go to add an operation, add more operations. And we can create a new operation. So... First link, let's give it a name. Let's give it a name. In fact, we'll come back to the name and I'll, I'll explain why. Um, how many of these drums do we think we want to craft? Well, we're probably going to want to craft at least 50 of them, um, but it would be nice if we had 100 of them. That's basically what these two options mean. Uh, this will mean that if your inventory value goes below 50, then it will try and craft some more. This is the minimum amount that you will need to go below before it will craft any. If you've got 60 of them, there's no point queuing up an extra 40. It's, you've already got a fair amount, uh, but we probably want to stock up to 100 of them so we've got plenty to sell. Maybe for, you know, maybe for selling them over the weekend, maybe for selling them on reset day, whatever the case may be. Now we've got to ask ourselves the question, well, it's all good and well knowing how many we'd like to craft, but we want to make sure that we're crafting them and we're making 
good profit on them. So yes, we definitely want to set a minimum profit before we craft these. If the ones that are already listed on the auction house, if the market value for the item is way below what it costs us to craft it, then we don't want to be in that market. There's no point, you know, crafting something that you're then going to have to sell it for less. So we do want a minimum profit. What do we put in this box though? There's a couple of options we can put in this box. By default, you'll see it highlights 100 gold, which is not a bad suggestion. You can put just a fixed, what's known as a fixed value in this. You can say, right, 100 gold. But what we can also do is be a little bit clever with this. We could also say, well, we want to base it upon how much it costs us to craft it. We want to make a minimum profit. So we want to say that the minimum profit has to be 10% of the crafting price. And we can use that price source that we learned about in the last video, crafting. So let's say it costs us 100 gold to make. Uh, we want to make sure that we make, this is basically like saying 10% profit on top. 10% of the crafting value is the minimum profit that we want there to be before we will go out of our way to craft these items. What we can even do is be even smarter and start introducing what is known as functions into these. So let me just type it out real quickly and then I'll explain what it is. Uh, 100 gold there. Right, there we go. So, uh, now what we can say is that th this is basically using a function, an operational function. We'll talk about these in a little bit more detail in a minute. But what it's basically saying is it's going to look at 10% of the crafting cost, and it's going to look at 100 gold, and it's going to pick the smaller of the two numbers. Uh, and that will then dictate what the minimum profit is. This becomes way more powerful with the auctioning operations that we'll get to, but these kind of functions are things that you can do even at this basic level. Uh, now, I tend to use these sorts of things pretty frequently, but... You can keep it simple, you can keep it complex, do whatever you're comfortable with. But let's name it then. Instead of naming it, what could be very simple to do is just to name this drums. You, you could very easily name it drums, but what we actually want to do is create some generic operations that can be used on multiple things. So we're just going to call this 10% crafting. Or 10% profit is probably a better way to call it. 10% of the craft, we'll, we'll, we'll delete the fancy stuff for now. We don't need all the fancy stuff for now. We'll just say 10% of the crafting cost is what we want there to be profit on the item. And we're going to restock 50 to 100. So 10%, 10% profit, uh, 50 to 100. Now what we can do is we can actually apply this operation to multiple different groups. This is why you don't have to make a specific operation for every item. This is why we group things up in the first place. If you've got the grouping structure in place, we can then say, right, well, we can apply that here. So we can see in the operations now, the 10% profit crafting a minimum of 50, maximum of 100 is applied here. We could also apply this to armor kits. There's nothing to stop us applying the exact same one. You can see it pops up in our list here. We can apply this exact same one to armor kits as well if we wish. This is where grouping things up accordingly makes your life much, much simpler. Make a couple of easy operations that you can use on many, many things and then apply it wherever it's necessary. But we've worked out now how we're gonna craft these things. Now we need to work out, well, how we're gonna sell them. Once again, ask yourself a simple question. You, you want to ask yourself the question, well, how much do I want to sell these for? Well, firstly, you want to make sure you're selling them for at least as much as it costs you to craft. Now, the default operation, and I understand why people get really, really confused with how the default, how operations works, because this is what Trade School Master presents you with. This is way too complicated for the average Joe. So what we're going to do, we're just going to delete this for a minute. Uh, I'll, 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 uh, we'll, we'll go back to the basics and we'll customize this a little bit more so in a minute. Um, let me explain how the auctioning operations work. The, the posting options are pretty straightforward. Most people get to grips with this pretty easily. How long do you want to post it for? Take your pick. Uh, how many do you want to post? Now we're looking at the uh, drums specifically. So maybe we want to post 20 at a time. We don't want to put all of our inventory on the auction house because it would flood the auction house. We want to just put 20 at a time 
uh, this gives us the opportunity to, you know, uh, cancel them if we need to, post them back on again, do the cancel scan, all that sort of good stuff. Uh, do you want to keep any? Do you want to stop posting them after they've expired? These are options you can play with if you feel the need to. But this is the meat and veg of the auctioning operations. We have our minimum price, we have our maximum price, and we have our normal price. Um, let's talk about for a second what these mean and then what we can do within them. Minimum price is, this is the absolute lowest value that Trade School Master will post this item for. Now, you can, like I've done, just put fixed gold values in here, but that's kind of risky, right? We want to link this in some way to how much it costs us to craft. So, at the very least, we should put 100% crafting in here. We never want to sell the item for less than what it costs us to craft. That seems pretty sensible, right? What we can, though, start to do is start using functions within Trade School Master to make these a little bit more smart. So let's talk about the functions for, for a minute or two then. Um, you can do some fancy things with the operations, and I want to talk about some of the functions and how we can use them. You can use mathematical functions. So you can add things together, you can take things away, you can multiply things, and you can divide things. And you can also reference percentages of custom price uh, of price sources as well. So a couple of examples here. DB market plus 20 gold would be a valid operation. Crafting multiplied by 1.1 would also be another valid operation. Or instead of doing multiplying, you could just reference a percentage. This, the, these are all entirely valid ones. These are pretty easy to get on board with. If you don't put 100%, for example, if you just put crafting, just putting crafting basically means the same as 100%. It's not essential to put the 100%, uh, but I like to do it just out of force of habit, if, if nothing else. So the mathematical one's pretty easy, right? There are some pretty cool, smart ones you can do, though. Min-max. Uh, this is one that we saw earlier. We, we looked at this ever so briefly with the crafting operations. Uh, these are a couple of examples that you could use. What it will do is it will pick either the smallest or the biggest, whichever one you choose, of a few different options. This becomes really helpful for if you don't know how to craft something, or your crafting cost is really expensive, it will pick the bigger one out of the two, for example. There's many scenarios where you may want to use minimum and maximum. This one's pretty easy. There's another one called first. This is one I quite like. It will then pick the first one out of the brackets. So in this scenario here, where we have first, average buy, and then DB market, if you've never bought that item, you won't have an average buy price for it. So that'll be nil, that'll, that'll basically be void, which will mean that it will revert to the market price. This is quite helpful to understand, and this can be used pretty powerfully in some situations. Um, Transmog, for example, is a good one where you might use an example like this. First, DB market. It will take the DB market price of something, if there is one. But of course, with Transmog, if you get something really, really rare, there might not be a DB market price. And so in turn, it will look at the DB regional market price. Now, what happens if there isn't one of those even? If it's super, super mega rare, there's not even a regional market average price, then it will take the third one in the list, which is just a flat gold value of like 10,000 gold. These functions can get pretty clever. Uh, and the more you understand how the functions work, the easier it will be for you to really customize these operations exactly how you wish. There is another one that I will only touch on briefly in this video because it's complicated enough that it could probably do with its own video in its entirety, and that's the logic functions. There are, there are a few of them, if greater than, if less than, if equal to, this sort of thing, um, but it allows you to do some simple logic within the operations. So this works on a basis, I've wrote it out in a sort of English, how it works. If A, this is the format, if A, B, C, D. If A is greater than B, then do C. If not, do whatever D is. Uh, and this is what an example might look like. So if greater than, if the DB market price is greater than 100 gold, then it will use 75 DB market as its price. If it's not greater than 100 gold though, 
it will use 50% DB market price. Um, this is just an example, but this shows you what the logic functions can do. Um, but I want to just emphasize, keep it simple. Don't feel the need to overcomplicate it. This is why I'm not going into this in great detail in this video. But some of the basic ones, the basic mathematical functions, min, max, and first are probably enough for you to make yourself some pretty clever operations if you wish. But let's look at what we might do. Let's continue with our example then. Let's get our drums up and running and see how it looks in its entirety. So let's get that out of the way just for a minute. So minimum price. We assessed earlier that we definitely don't want to sell it for less than what it costs us to craft. Um, so we, we can have that as our minimum price for sure. What happens though if we're the only person listing that item? Well, if we're the only person listing it, it's going to revert to the normal price. Now, if that's the case, we can quite comfortably charge a nice premium for the fact that we're the only person posting it. So at that point, you may say, right, well, 250% of my crafting price is what I'm going to try and sell it for. This is what I'd like to sell it for, but I have to be the only one listing it on the auction house for this to happen. Um, but what if there's some random item on the auction house that's 400,000 gold? We don't want to start undercutting an item that's 400,000 gold. That's ridiculous. If it goes above, a, I don't know, 500% of our crafting price, we want to just basically, when it goes above this price, then we can say just post it at the maximum. We're never going to sell something for more than five times what it costs us to craft. We don't want to be a too much of a greedy goblin but this you can see is the core basis of a very simple auctioning operation we could then call this a hundred percent crafting 20 because it's posting 20 at a time this then can be a somewhat generic operation for us our minimum price means we're never going to sell it for less than what it costs us to do now I will give you guys a little bit of a, a, a quick tip. If you do divide by 0 0.95 at the end of your minimum, it basically takes into account the 5% auction house cut. Um, the auction house, every time you sell something, it takes 5% of the sale price and it keeps it for itself. Now to counteract that, we can set our minimum price to be just a sm smidge higher than that so that when the auction house takes its 5% cut, we're still left with 100% crafting. Um, it's, we're never going to sell something for less than what it cost us to craft to make. You might even want to go a little bit greedier with this. You could say 110%, you could say 120%. I mean, if you wanted to, you could say that your minimum price is 150%. But you may very quickly start to find that your items uh, don't post because they're listed for less. Now, there are a couple of options that I want to just quickly highlight here. Um, when What does Trade Skill Master do when the item goes below this price? Because that it will happen, for sure. Somebody will post something way cheaper than they probably should do. You probably don't want to undercut them, but you want to put your auction on. You want to put your item on the auction house. Instead of not posting it, you have a few options. You could just post it at your minimum price. Um, this is a very common one to use, and for stuff that you don't really, uh, you don't, you just post it on the auction house and don't pay too, too much attention to it. Sure, go with this one. One I really like though is ignore auctions below minimum. This is one that's been added quite recently within Trade School Master uh, and it's very, very powerful. It means that if somebody's doing something stupid, if somebody's posting something way below the crafting price, basically Trade School Master will just ignore the fact that that item exists. It will then look at the next, it will look at the auction that is the first one that is above your minimum price and undercut that one instead. This is a firm favorite of mine. I've started to use this a lot, lot more recently. Uh, and it in turn is meaning that when my items sell, they're selling for a higher average price, which is very nice. You can also apply these same rules to your maximum and uh, 
yeah, your maximum price. So if, if it goes above the maximum, you can specify what Trade School Master does with it as well. But there, there we go. There's a very simple auctioning operation. We've talked a little bit about some of the functions. We can go ahead now and we can create ourselves a bunch of operations for all of the different items in the different groups. Obviously, just for the purpose of now, we've done the drums of deathly ferocity. But you'd want to set up some crafting, some shopping. I suppose we should just highlight shopping very quickly. Shopping is a super simple one. Super, super simple. Uh, you could say have something set the maximum price that you want to pay for something. You could set this to be, I don't know, like a percentage of crafting, right? Yeah, if something is less than 75% of crafting, um, then you might consider buying it to flip rather than crafting it yourself. The crafting operations are very, very simple. Once you know the fundamentals, you can make these really, really quickly and really easily. Um, but go ahead. Uh, play with the operations, get your groups and operations all set up and we'll join again in the next video where we go through a full daily process of how we utilize TSM. Now, if you want to skip ahead a little bit uh, and you don't want to have to go to the effort of making all of these groups, creating all of the operations, applying all of the operations to these groups, because as we've discussed, it's a very timely process. Um, I do have the solution for you. If you want, you can have access to my Patreon-based groups and operations. This is a little bit of a sellout for myself, I know, but to the guys, that's, guys and girls that support this channel financially, I do offer my TSM groups and operations to them. Um, let me show you what that actually looks like if I select the correct profile, my Patreons get this. They get every single profession with every single item uh, as of Shadowlands, as of patch 9.1. It is all here. It is all included. Everything has an operation against it. Everybody, Everything is all sorted. It is literally ready to rock and roll. Uh, these groups, like I said, they're available to Patreons. Um, I'll leave a link in the description down below. If you support me on Patreon, you can get access to the import code for this and you can be off up and running really quickly and really easily. But that was just my small little uh, promotion there, boys and girls. If you want to support the channel, I highly appreciate it. But in the next video, we're going to focus on a daily routine, exactly what we do. Uh, it covers the crafting, it covers the gathering of materials, it covers the listing of items on the auction house. A little bit of a walkthrough, I guess that's what we'll call it. But I'll leave it there for today. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. If you're new around here, consider subscribing. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.